If you guys want the chance to win a custom printed World War II German or American minifigure, all you have to do, leave a like on the video, comment down below, make sure you guys are subscribed, and I'll be picking a winner in another video. All right, guys, welcome to the season finale of building the Battle of the Bulge in LEGO. Today, we're going to be going in-depth, taking a look at the whole mock, all the new details that I put into it, all the minifigures that I set up, what they're doing, and all of that. So without further ado, let's get started. One quick thing before we get started, I just wanna let you guys know I have about 15 wheelies Jeeps left. We also have about 20 of these half tracks that are used in this mock, along with some of these printed figures that you see in this mock are on my website, bricktactical.com. Links are in the description, just letting you guys know. Man, oh man, I don't even know where to start. I'm probably gonna start off by showing you guys some of the new things that I've added to this mock. So I guess we'll start, let's go right to left this time. So normally in these videos, I show all the different little details, all the minifigures that I've added, all the you know building updates and pretty much everything in the finale video. So I guess let's start over here. So a couple things that I've changed or added rather are all these snow piles on the top of this ridge. So we have two ridges here and I decided to add a lot of white detailing here with different white plates, some white studs, some tiles, all sorts of different colored um, or shaped white pieces here. So all along there that just breaks up. It used to be all gray and that way it breaks it up. And obviously it is the battle of the bulge. So it would be snowy. So we added that. I really like how that turned out. Another thing we added over here on the ridge was I added some trees kind of shorter and then some fallen over trees just to add some more green up there. It was really bland up there. So I wanted to add just something. It's not my favorite. I wish I had more time for this mock. I would have made that probably look a lot better. What I probably would have done is, if you guys remember from my Sinai Desert video, I had a mountain where it was a ledge and then it was a secondary mountain here. And then that way there would only be a little bit of white and there'd be more rock structure. I think that would have looked really good, but that's kind of what we've got. And then a couple other things, I added some telephone lines. I thought it would just add some different height variants to the mock and it would look cool. I think it looks really nice. You can see we even had some little threading there you can barely see that goes along the length of the lines all the way down there i was going to do the lines go right through here but i thought why do i or like this way but i thought why do i have to have it go perpendicular to any of the corners so why not just kind of make it go straight through the middle at kind of a curved angle so i thought that kind of breaks up the mock too and then another thing i finished the roof on this building this was something i really did not know how to do Throughout this whole mock series a lot of you guys were giving me some good suggestions we were going to do potentially just a flat top um, roof or an angled like shingles but i decided on just building it up a little bit more making it a little bit bombed out and then adding a, another floor or a third story that we could have more figures on top. So that's what we did. And if you take a step back, I think it looks actually really nice. So I really like the way that turned out and uh, it just gives us more spots to put figures and I think it looks good. So let me know what you guys think of that in the comments. Another thing, I added a Flak 88 in the back. I also added the Panzer Jagger the half track, obviously we've had the Hellcat and the Stuart tank here for a while as placeholders, but I actually really like the you know where those were at. I also added this little artillery kind of shed or shelter for some ammo crates and whatnot. We'll get to that in a second. Um, another thing, the wheat farm is completely done. So you can see, I call it a wheat farm. It can be really whatever you want, but it's that technique of using antenna pieces as you can see there on the bottom and then taking these Technic pins in tan and just setting them on top and it actually looks really good and uh, I think it, it, it I, what, I'm, what I'm trying to say is I like the way it turned out but I think I could do better next time and the reason being for that is if we go over here real quick I used these pieces which are these antenna pieces that have the black antenna there actually is a piece that uses a white antenna and that would have looked better because you wouldn't see all that black down there. You can kind of see it if you get down low, you can see the black antennas and it doesn't look as good, but I think if we had it all white, it would have just made it that much better. So that's just something, if you guys want to use this technique in the future, definitely get the proper color antennas, depending on what your mock is. You know, if it's a snow mock, try to get white. If it's a desert mock, try to get tan, et cetera, et cetera. So, that's kind of the overall updates as far as what I added to the mock since the last video. Obviously, you probably can tell I added, you know, snow to the tops of these houses, you know, studs here and there. There's studs spread out, you know, pretty much all throughout the mock. 
Um, I added some, some more snow up here. And then obviously the figures that we're going to get to here in a second. So other than that, that's kind of the main updates. I did actually, uh, one more thing, is I added a lot of barbed wire. You can see I added some around the Flak 88. I added a bunch here because kind of what I wanted to go for was that this is a very strong German position these, that these Americans are trying to get into. And so you have these two blown up buildings that they're kind of using as a base. You have the Americans coming from this kind of a choke point being this ridge. You have the Germans coming in from both sides and then kind of head on as well. So they really wanted to blockade that one entry point off. So they used, you know, barbed wire. I added actually a couple more tank traps there. So you can see those there and um, it just adds a lot of detail to the mock and I really like the way it looks. So without further ado, that's kind of the general update. Let's go ahead and dive deep and show you guys what these figures are up to. All right, guys, check out my Spotify Aldera. Make sure you guys give it a follow. One of my new songs is called In The Moment. I'm trying to get this to a thousand streams. So guys, go ahead and stream it. All right, guys, let's go ahead and start in this back left corner or the front left corner actually with the Germans and what they got going on. So there's a lot more Germans than Americans on this mock simply because I have more Germans. I made three versions of the Germans and then I made the one version of the Americans. And this was kind of a crunch for time situation with the minifigures and whatnot. A lot of these figures are actually sold out and I needed to film this finale. And then after I'm done filming this video, these figures are getting shipped out. Almost all of these figures are getting taken off this mock, packaged up, and they're being shipped across the country, across the world actually. So that's why I talked about them in the beginning of the video. But that's the reason why I don't have a lot of Americans and that's why it's very German heavy, especially on this front section of the mock. So without further ado, let's go ahead and start totally from the front corner here. So we've got a couple Germans here. They're just talking. Maybe they're playing rock, paper, scissors. I don't really know. But I decided not to have like the Flak 88 kind of in operation. I decided I just wanted something here that they could kind of be protecting. It could be out of operations. Maybe they're trying to fix it or maybe it's just here. Maybe it's too cold to actually use the gun. So that's totally likely in the Battle of the Bulge. There's a lot of those types of stories that I've heard from veterans and whatnot. So we've got a Flak 88. Here's kind of that covered up, you know, ammo storage. We got some stick grenades. We got some crates. It would probably have different ammunition either for the flak or just in general. And then obviously we have this building right here. We actually have this one German soldier or this officer up on a crate standing and he's talking to these group of riflemen here. So maybe he's having a little pep talk. We've got a bunch of ammo crates back there. Different propaganda posters um, hanging up on the sides of the buildings. We actually have those kind of scattered around. There's one right there. There's another one up there. There's actually one on the front of this building as well. So just something cool that I wanted to add. It adds a little bit of color and you know vibe and flavor to the mock. So I decided to do that. We've got a burn barrel going on back here. Obviously, Battle of the Bulge, extremely cold, harsh weather. So these guys are trying to warm up. This guy here is smoking a cigarette, trying to get warm. Um, a lot of very famous Battle of the Bulge pictures. Everyone's smoking cigarettes. I obviously don't endorse smoking, but I do make these Lego cigarettes to make accurate representations of the time. So we've got that. I decided to have some American prisoners back here. So just to add a little bit of different dynamic to the mock. So these four soldiers are being kind of held at gunpoint by this one MP40 gunner here. So he looks pretty sweet. He's got his, you know, MP40 pouches. And I love the way these figures turned out. We've got the arm printing you'll see on all these Germans just to break up the color on the arms. And then we've got the snow on the bottom of the boots just to give it that much more detail. So we've got that, you know, these soldiers may have been trying to sneak around one of these sides and they got captured. So they got their hands up and all of that. This is kind of an Easter egg. I try to have a little bit of an Easter egg in every mock I do. A lot of you guys that have been following me, you know, know that. So we've got this dead German. I've had this German. It's been through D-Day, the Battle of D-Day, which was a mock I did, I think in the Battle of the Somme. And now it's in this one. So. It's just kind of a kind of a going theme right now. And then this German wandered back here and maybe he found that ray gun from this guy. Maybe he was guarding it in one of these bins. So just a little something I wanted to throw in there. I'm not going to go into too much detail on these buildings because you guys have seen these so long. If you guys have watched the full series, if you haven't, definitely check it out. I'll put links to that full playlist in the description or you can check it out up in the card section. But totally battle damaged concrete here. We've got the corners of this building in a dark bluish gray. And then we've got 
the light blue gray concrete look just bullet holes just cracked and everything just totally destroyed um, there you can see the I want you for US Army propaganda and once again there's the concrete just totally destroyed we've got the snow on the top of course um, just different techniques you can see on how I made it kind of look destroyed and then up top we've got kind of a bombed out roof or a second story here bottom story just to give a quick disclosure here we've got you know reddish brown for like the wood flooring we've got the staircase going up i actually just added that too we've got some crates and ammo we got some windows down there we got the front door not too much going on in there but just enough detail just to give you guys something up here obviously these guys are using this kind of left over roof or second story for some cover we've got this guy up here with the mg34 we've got this guy up here with just his car 98 we've got this guy actually up here with an mg42 as well so these guys are directly in line with those americans you can see right there so he's taking shots at them same with this guy here he's taking shots right over the farm at those americans down there so that's kind of what's going on with this building here let's go ahead and move to this building while we're talking about buildings this one i really like the color scheme of the dark tan and light bluish gray once again i'm going with the light bluish gray um, this time on the corners and then i'm doing dark bluish or no not dark bluish gray dark tan and a lot of these are what's called masonry bricks people call them either masonry bricks brick bricks profile bricks basically it's a lego one by two brick but it's got this like scribble not scribbled um scribed in line on the actual piece itself that makes it look like a real brick so very useful brick i used a lot of those as you can see just totally destroyed building um not as destroyed on the back obviously because this is just up against the forest there's no reason it would be that destroyed but a little bit crumbly there we've got some more ammo crates and whatnot a tree fell over there that's another thing that when i was building this mock i had all these trees but i kept thinking to myself how can i make this more realistic and you got to think not all the trees are going to be standing up it sounds so simple but i just decided to knock a couple of them over and it makes the mock look that much better so this is kind of an angle of the mock that I've never shown. It's actually a cool angle because you can see the telephone lines. You can see all the trees. You can see the mountain. I've never stood back here. And the only reason for that is because there's a door behind me right now. Um, it's actually closed. So you can see we got some more broken down trees there. All of these trees are made up of these dark green leaf pieces. The dark green just looked better. We talked about that early on, about what color the tree branches should be, if it should be normal green or dark green. Decided on dark green, and then using these reddish brown one by one brick cylinders, um, or round bricks, I think they're called, for the main trunks. And then we added the white studs to add it, kind of a snowy effect and make it blend in more with the base color being white. So I really like how that turned out getting a backside view of this building. Once again, I never shown this angle of this building. Once again, quite destroyed. We got some crates down there on the bottom as well. And then obviously this is where the telephone lines start. And then moving up to the top of this building, similar situation. We have a little bit less of damage here on the top. And then we've got the snow obviously on kind of the peaks and valleys and corners of this building. We've got this German soldier right here. He's got a Panzer Faust that he's probably going to shoot at one of those tanks down there. And then we've got these two guys here. We've got a guy with an MG42, and then we've got another MP40 gunner here, probably helping him out with his ammo belt or something there. So we've got three figures up top. I thought this was just a really cool view. If we get right here, you can see the Americans right there and um, down through the middle there, and it's just a cool view. And then obviously we've got the figures right there and right there. So that's the top of the second building. Oh yeah, we also have a crate up here with some extra rifles in it. Probably a good thing to have while you're up top of a building. You don't want to run out of ammo. And uh, I guess a quick look at the front. A little bit of damage there. There's actually more crates in there. We got another propaganda poster I talked about. So that's kind of the look at the secondary building. I really like how these two buildings turned out. So without further ado, let's keep going on some of these figures. All right, couple more figures down here in this bottom left corner I want to talk about. We've got these guys on a German gun here. I believe this is actually a Russian Pac-38 gun. I'm not too sure, but... I'm using it as a German gun. I don't really care. It's just something I wanted to throw in the mock. So we've got the cool, you know, look like it's sh just shot a show with the transparent orange disc there. We've got these guys. This guy's loading it up. This guy's passing him shells. There's shells all over the place. So that's a really cool detail there. And then we've got these riflemen coming up 
you know, on the back side of this wheat field. We got the Panzer Jager. I wanted to add some more German vehicles. I talked about that at the beginning of the video, but might not be completely accurate, but I had it on the shelf and I wanted to add another tank. So that's kind of my excuse. Looks really nice in the um, snow here. Then I also added some studs kind of coming off the back of the tank treads like it's kicking it up because it's moving. So just little subtle details like that make the mock so much better, you know, just those little things that stand out. So we've got obviously a driver in there. We've got this guy back here kind of as a secondary MG gunner. And then moving over here, I can't get too low because of these telephone lines, but we've got some more figures there coming up on the barbed wire there, trying to take these guys on head on. We got this guy here with an SG-44. MP40 down there, stick grenades, car 98s, all the classic German weapons. Let's actually go ahead and move to the top of the cliff here. So we got the half track. Now I talked about that, that's for sale. If you guys want one, go ahead and check it out. But that's fully loaded. We've got a bunch, and I mean a bunch of riflemen coming up behind it. And they're basically, what the Germans are trying to do over here is they're trying to pinch the Americans here. Cause we've got Germans over here, Germans over here, and Germans on the front. So really, these guys are, the Americans are in a bad position right now. They've got to push through and out on both flanks. So we'll talk about that here in a second, but we've got all these Germans coming up on the ridge, getting some height advantage, shooting down on the Americans. So closer look at some of these Germans here. We've just got all sorts of kinds of Germans here, different colored stall helms. We've got the gunmetal stall helms. We've got the white stall helms, all of these fully printed figures here with my new it's actually my own car 98. You can actually buy that individually if you want to for a dollar. So we got all that. We got a fully loaded half track right there, just rolling up on these guys, trying to give them more support. Once again, I added those trees just to add a little bit more color and flavor to the top of this ridge. All of these guys are, you know, either got machine guns, Panzerfaust, snipers, FG-42s, all sorts of guns and machine guns shooting down on these Americans right here. So I feel really bad for those Americans, but they're getting just totally destroyed and pinched right now. Another thing you might not see, and I was, I forgot to mention this earlier in the video, is there's not any dead soldiers. And the reason I did that was, one, I didn't have any more figures to use, so I just didn't have any, like, there's no way to have dead soldiers if I ran out of soldiers, because I think it's pretty packed now, but if I took any of these figures off, it would feel empty, so there's no dead soldiers. I know it's not as realistic as some of my other builds, but once again, I didn't have enough figures, which was my fault. And then also I was really crunched for time for this. And the injured soldiers take a lot of time to set up and pose and get like the little studs for the blood right and all that. So that is something I did want to say, but hopefully in my next mock, I won't be as crunched for time and I'll make even more figures. So thank you to you guys for buying these figures. That's... <laughs> You know, I'm not saying it's your guys' fault, but I appreciate the support. I would much rather have my figures sell than not sell. So that's one of the reasons why there's no injured or dead soldiers here. So I just wanted to point that out. All right, moving on to the secondary ridge here. So if you guys remember, I think it was like the first five episodes, this mock was actually turned 180 degrees. So this front ridge was actually right here and this was back there. And we decided, I think around week six, seven, eight, to flip the mock around. That way we could see this ridge a little bit better. So that's what we did. That's why this ridge is over here now. And I like the idea of having, like I said, kind of a ridge that tanks could come through. I think it looks really cool. So we've got this over here. We've got a bunch of Germans coming up, kind of reinforcing these guys. We've got this guy here with an MG34 you know, trying to pick through the trees there. You can see kind of his line of sight down there at those Americans that are coming up. We've got this guy basically yelling at these guys to hurry up. We've got all of these Germans that are just peeking over this edge, getting total great shots on these Americans here. We've got this guy with a Panzerfaust that he really should be popping up and trying to shoot that Sherman, or not the Sherman, the um, M18 Hellcat. So this is the only American here that sees these guys and he has his Thompson out and started to shoot at these guys. So that's kind of what's going on with this ridge here. And then let's go ahead and move down here. What's going on kind of in this forest. I'm trying to think, how can I get a good angle? Let's start over here. So we've got these Americans coming from over here and some of these guys snuck past them. Here's kind of another Easter egg while I'm at it. It's kind of a dead skeleton of an American there with an M1 pot helmet. So these Americans are slipping through here and trying to flank 
around this as much as they can. And maybe that's where our captured Americans came from. So that's kind of like my made up story of what's happening. So a couple of these guys are slipping through the trees and these guys aren't seeing them. So they're pushing up on these Germans here. And these Germans are coming from this building here. And then there's also a field gun in here. So there's kind of these bushes and broken down trees here that this field gun's kind of hiding in and is trying to shoot at that Stuart tank right there. It's a perfect line of shot there. So that's what's going on down there. I can't really get my camera down in here any more than this, but you can see what's going on there. We've got some Germans here that are pushing up and hiding behind trees and whatnot. We've got this guy here with an SG-44. We've got some Americans pushing up here with different weapons, M1 carbines, M1 Grands, Thompsons, um, just riflemen of all sorts here, 1911 there. So all these guys are just trying to make kind of a classic flank and push up on these Germans here. Maybe take out that field gun or maybe just try to make it to these buildings and try to start securing those. So that's kind of what's happening with these Americans. You can see this guy down here is pushing through with his M1 carbine. These guys are trying to get around, you know, all these tank tracks, you know, there's barbed wire, there's just all sorts of obstacles. There could be landmines that they don't know about. So they're taking their time, but they're trying to push through as hard as they can. Really like the way that wheat field looks next to some of these figures. It looks really cool. Um, getting my camera down right here, you can see some of these Americans are pushing up hard. Um, that's kind of my classic barbed wire technique. I've showed that in a video. You can check that out. I'll put a link to that in the description as well. Um, once again, I've talked about this in previous videos. I'm using different colored parts to kind of break up all of the white because there's a lot of white going on obviously because of the snow but uh, i wanted to break that up and add a little bit more color to the mock so we did that we got this guy here with the 1919 pushing up a couple more riflemen here here's a good look at that stuart tank we've got this guy up here manning the 1919 this is actually a different version of the minifigure that i made and sold it's a it's the same print, but it's on reddish brown parts. And you can see all the other guys are in dark tan gear. So the reddish brown version was kind of a limited run. I might do some more of them, but I think it looks really good. So he's up there using that 1919. We actually have another guy on the back hitching a ride. We've got a couple more of those guys running through between the tanks using them as cover. Um, we've got two of the guys up top here on the turret of this tank. We got another guy on the back. Actually got one more guy trailing behind. He's trying to catch up or maybe he's just a little bit too, you know, scared to, you know, fight in the fight. So we got all those guys pushing up here and I can actually show you guys. So this is the reddish brown print of the minifigure. Let's go up to the light here. This is the reddish brown print. This one I added a trench coat because I think it looks really cool. So you can't really see the printing as much, but it's on the sides of the legs and the torso as well. And then if we take a look at the... This is the more um, classic dark tan print. So there you can see the side printing. It's printed on the sides of the legs, underneath the arms, on the sides of the torso and everything. And um, once again, I love how the boots have that snow on it. Comes with my own M1 pot helmet and my own M1 Grant. So these are brick tactical accessories, custom printed on real Lego parts. And uh, these are actually sold out, but the German figures are not sold out. So if you guys want some German figures, you can definitely pick those up. But I just wanted to give you guys kind of a close up of what these figures look like. Close up, that's what you're seeing. You know, these guys are all over the mock right there. So that's kind of what the Americans are up to. Other than that, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I really need to show you guys. But it's a really cool mock. I really enjoyed building it. It took a little bit longer than I wanted to just because of how busy I've been throughout this past year. Um, or, you know, it hasn't been a year. It's been 32 episodes. I think this would be the 32nd episode. I skipped a couple weeks here and there due to, you know, just a lot of business stuff going on. But all is well. Hope you guys have enjoyed this series. I really enjoyed it. Let's go ahead and cut to the giveaway winner from last week's episode. And then we'll go ahead and wrap this video up. All right, guys. Got the comments loaded up from last week's episode. Let's go ahead and pick the winner from last week's episode here i think it was for some gunmetal stall helm so let's go ahead and do this guy boom samuel gish you are the winner he says super excited for the finale well guess what you're in the finale video my man so all you have to do to claim your prize send me an email through my website bricktactical.com with a screenshot of you logged in and your full address and i can get those out to you all right guys that's going to do it for the season finale of building the battle of the bulge in lego this has been a mock that you guys have been wanting me to build 
in Lego for many, many, many years. I've been doing YouTube for over 10 years now. And I made this, I made a battle of the bulge mock, I think a couple times early on in like 2012, 2013. And I actually did some old stop motion videos. You can check those out on my channel. You can just YouTube search Clone Trooper X39, Battle of the Bulge stop motion. You'll probably find it. They're really bad, but I have done a Battle of the Bulge in the past. It was nowhere near this big or this cool. So I appreciate all the hype, all the comments, all the viewership on this series. You guys can start to let me know what battle you want me to do next in LEGO. So this is obviously the season finale. Next Sunday's video will be another finale video of this. It'll just be, instead of me talking about it, it'll just be a shorter video of cool montage video clips and whatnot. So that'll be next Sunday. I'll probably take a week or two break after that for mock videos. Just want to, you know, I have to take this apart, sort the parts. Like I said, right after this video, I've got to take all these figures off, package them up, ship them out to you guys because they're sold out. And by the time this video is up, I'm sure a lot of the Germans will be sold out as well. If you guys want a half track or a wheelies Jeep, those are also on the website. But yeah, if you guys want to start letting me know what mock you want me to do next, I want to do something really big, really cool. I really want to get to 100,000 subscribers, guys, this coming year. That is my goal. We're at, at least when I'm filming this, this is Saturday the 6th, or no, Sunday the 6th of December, 2020. I want to get, I think we're at like 85,600, just around there, and I want to get to 100,000. So guys, if you aren't already subscribed, please consider subscribing. It's free, doesn't cost you anything. You can always unsubscribe, and uh, it means a lot to me. So guys, without further ado, thank you so much for the support. Drop a comment down below what you guys think of the mock. How do you guys like how it turned out? Do you guys like the minifigures? Do you like the way I set it up? Any feedback's great. Obviously, I can't change anything now because it's done, but uh, all the feedback would be great. Check out some more videos right there and there. I'll put the complete playlist of this series right there. Check out the last week's episode on this right there. Subscribe right there. Links are in the description. Check them out. Thanks again, guys. Have a great day.